Well, I've just taken the elbow off the top of the trap. You can see that's block solid. It was also blocked all in there as well. So that's what was causing it to all back up. So I'm going to give this a clean out, clean out the trap as well. You can see a bit of gunk caught on the bottom there as well. And then we'll get it all back up and running. What's happening people? Welcome back to today's video. It's not a power flushing video, I promise you. There is a little bit of power flushing involved, but the video is not based on power flushing because I know I've had a few comments on my power flushing video saying seen one, seen them all and it gets boring, which I get. Power flushing is a boring job to be honest. So yeah, I'm only really going to be f putting up power flushing videos if there's something genuinely interesting about it, which is why I'm including this one. But like I said, I'm not in filming the whole power flush there's just a couple of bits that i thought were interesting and actually probably not even related to the power flush but it's something that i found on the job which i put in and then i've got a breakdown and it's just basically goes to show if you don't get your boiler service regularly you're going to have problems so i hope you enjoyed the video i'm keeping this intro short and sweet so you guys can crack on with the video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one okay so Today, I'm doing a power flush. So you guys have seen me do loads of power flushes. So I'll see how the flush goes. And if there's anything interesting, I'll show you on the flush itself. But what I've just found out is bad stuff. So customers reported when they're running the hot tap, they're getting brown, rusty water coming out of it. So I've got an Ecotech Plus here. Now, initially, I thought that the plate may have pinholed because... If you're getting rusty water when you're running the hot taps, that could be a sign that there's a pinhole in the plate. But if that was the case, you could have also had the symptoms of the pressure just continuous going up because the mains will be obviously overpowering whatever's in the system until it gets to, well, until it equalizes in the system and the mains pressure. So I'm just setting up the power flush and my plan is to go into the magnet clean here. So I'm just going to be taking the filter off there. I've made up a couple of adapters to go onto the filter connections. But what I found, which is interesting and bad and answers all of our questions, is this stopcock here. So if you look, that stopcock is linked from the cold feed to the flow pipe. There's, it's like a, a dodgy filling loop. And that was cracked open. And that explains why customer said when they're running the heating they're getting rusty water coming out the hot taps because what's happening it's flowing down the heating and literally going round from there picking up the cold feed coming out of there and out the hot taps so god knows how long that's been fitted like that for but that's so bad they've been doing the washing up in there they've been showering with that hot water it's just bad <laughs> there's nothing else i can say to describe it other than bad so i'm gonna remove that stop clock i'm just gonna cap off both ends up here i've tried that handle and it's not clearing so whilst i'm flushing hopefully that might clear out because i'm gonna be flushing through the boiler it might clear out that flow valve if not i've got another flow valve in the van so i can replace that to make sure that they can then just use the built-in filling loop on the boiler rather than having to mess around with this so yeah it's an interesting start to this flush but at least it's another thing that i've found which i can resolve so that it won't happen again after the system's been flushed so that's now up to temperature i just need to basically get the connections onto there and we can start flushing all right there's the old stop cock so i've removed that and i've capped off both ends there water's back on happy days now that side is the filling loop on that side isn't working at the moment so like i said i've got another flow valve on the van but perhaps when i flush it because i'm flushing through the boiler it might clear it and it might start working again if not i'll replace it but just in case i've got i do have a backup option there so now that that's all done and the reason just to explain that i've done that before i started flushing is just in case this was letting by when I'm flushing, I don't want any chemicals mixing in with the domestic side. So I thought the safest thing to do, get that capped off before I start the flush, 
now the water's back on, I can now carry on as I was going to. So that's up to temperature. Right, finished cycling all the rads. So, oh man, I forgot how tight these get when they're hot. Oh. Right, let's have a look at how much muck we've picked up. Oh, that is eight radiators. That's a lot. That is a good catch for eight rads. So power flush, well worth it, well needed. Let's get this cleaned off and then start dumping all the muck out. Okay, dump is all done. Now, this is probably my favorite part of this flush today, other than the fact that I found that dodgy filling loop. So remember what I said about the built-in filling loop here. So before that flow isolation valve or the filling loop bit on the flow valve, let me just twist the camera up. That wasn't doing anything. But now, if I turn that, I turn that, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. It's filling. Which means by flushing through the boiler, it's cleared the blockage on the filling loop side on, on the flow valve. Which means now I haven't got to change that flow valve. I've just got to fit a new handle on there and we're out of here. Happy days. Okay, so I've got an ideal logic combi. Customer ran out of gas a few days ago and ever since then, whenever they tried to fire it, it just doesn't seem to play ball. Well, I can hear it straight away. It's a block condense. You hear that? Bubbling away. So, it should be nice. Straightforward repair. We'll open up the sump. Get rid of all that water inside there, and that'll start working again. That's right. All right, so there's a hell of a lot of condensate backed up in there. I'm going to take the trap out and give that a clean as well and see where that's terminating. Make sure it's not got blocked up anywhere else. And then, yeah, clean it out, pop it back together. That should be job done. All right, I've just taken the elbow off the top of the trap and you can see that's block solid. It was also blocked all in there as well. So that's what was causing it to all back up. So I'm going to give this a clean up, clean out the trap as well. You can see a bit of gunk caught in the bottom there as well. And then we'll get it all back up and running. All right, the condense is looking a lot more clearer. So, oh, let me turn the new light off. Let's now reset that. You should get a zero on there. That's perfect. Do you want to pop the heating on for me? Yeah, I think it is. Oh, yeah. I think it goes, if that's red and if you push it, it goes green. Right. So I'm guessing it's on now. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Bingo. Job done. So you won't get in there. Just anyone who's watching, keep on top of your boiler servicing and your maintenance and it will prevent unnecessary call outs.